What's up guys, it's Superboy Birdo. I'm happy to say this is my last trimester here in the Lewisburg Industrial Maintenance Automation Program. And I'll be starting on my next uh, two years of college in the TCAT Chevyville, going for ITIM. Y'all can look it up by the way. But I thought for this video, I'd be showing you guys how the FANUC robots work. We actually got it to work and it's been a, <laughs> I've actually done some pretty cool drawings with it as long as you know how the motion types work and getting to know your controller. So, without further ado, I'm going to show you guys the basics of how to start it up, how to identify the teach pendant. It's a little complicated, it's a bit more advanced than the Escala Modeman, but it does do a whole lot more, has much more dexterity, and it's just, it's just an amazing robot to use, in my opinion. No, no offense to the Escalas, of course, but anyways, Hope you guys enjoy this. So the first thing you want to identify is what type of robot you're using, the type model. Uh, this is the Fanning Baller LR Mate 200 ID 4S model. And then you want to know what type of control panel you're using as well. You're using a Fanning System R30IB Mate. And the reason why that's important is because sometimes if the battery drains down on these robots, you have to put back the software version of it after you put in the new batteries. And if you put in the wrong software version of the robot, it would not read the components that you put into the system, and you'll start you'll start having trouble. So, anyways, so you just want to make sure of that. Then also have this on the teach switch mode when you're going to start up. So we're going to turn it on. So you can see the control panel is starting, and also the teach pendant as well. Now a couple of things, of course. You want to recognize what type of teach panel you're using. And so one of the first thing you want to make sure is that the e-stop is pressed. And also make sure you start identifying what key components are here. It takes a while to kind of use the settings, the manuals, because it's such an advanced uh, teach pen software that they use. But once you start getting used to it, um, it becomes easier and you start appreciating that the the settings that they put into the teach pendant. So this is the startup, and don't be alarmed if you see the fault. That's actually indicating that the dead man switch is released, and that's how we want it. Now also, you can let go of your e-stop, and when you hit once, you will see the fall go away. And if you didn't hear that, you can actually hear the robot actuation starting up. So one of the first things, of course, if you want to start making a startup program is that you have to go to this side where it says teach and on teach you will hit select. Now once you're in select mode you will actually see the different programs that you can put in to your teach pendant and many of these have already have names so we're gonna make a new one so all you have to do this is actually a touchable pendant so you can actually press on the screen, but I prefer if you use the smart keys. So I'm gonna go ahead and press FF2. And instead of doing this complicated, you can actually go to the options and go to keyboard. And once it pulls up the keyboard, you can actually put in easier the name of the program. So we're just gonna call this, let's see, P R G I. Okay, and then we're gonna, click exit and leave and there you can see it's already done and then we hit next no. oh enter sorry my apologies I forgot about that I forgot that part so of course you just hit enter after that now as you can see it says end but now you can actually start the programming stage of the robot so of course like I said you want to get familiar of how the robot moves so right now we're on joint, and so the individual parts of the robot would move. So, there you go. And the way it kind of sets the motion is that not only you have to hit the, the dead man switch, but you also have to hit on the shift as well, because that would enable for it to move. So, I'm gonna probably put up the speed about 50, no, maybe 20, 40, 35 right there. And if you can see up here, that's actually where you, the, it indicates the speed. And it's interesting enough how the manual works on that. But anyways, and here you will change up the speed, of course. 
So, here you go. So you can see, those are the access points. And I could speed it up a bit more. But it's better if you start it off slow, of course. So one of the first things you kind of want to do What I should have done first is actually uh, to have it set up to the program hold position. But in order for you to actually make a move, let's just say for this one, all you have to do is click on F1, which is point, and still have the shift on, and there you go. It's already programmed to that point location that you want that robot to move. Now let's make another move. All right, a bit of that, maybe a little bit of this. You know, just get familiar how the robot moves, get the joint axis, because once you start mastering that and you want to start doing circles or drawings on it, then that's when you have to kind of change the motion type, that's what we call it. And I'll show you how that's done in a little bit. But here we're going to set up another point here. And one of the things you can also do is change the type of continuous speed. So here I'll put maybe 50, enter. And here I'll put 50, enter. And then you can also change the, the type of motion. So find and continuous. Continuous actually, when it gets to a certain point of the motion of the robot, it will just continue on but it won't stop at a very precise location. It will get to, these, to the location you need it to. But if you put it on fine, however, that usually helps get more of a precise position of the robot motion. It'll continue on, but it will stop for a little bit, but then it'll continue. You'll, you'll see that in one of the programs in a second. So here, we'll click enter, fine. And then we'll do the same thing here. Click on the choice and click on fine as well. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is show you how to return it back to home position. So first things first, is you're gonna go back to select, and then I'm gonna find the get home page. Let's see. Okay. Home, there it is. And then you can hit shift and then click backwards. Now here, the forward, you can actually help enable it to automatically go back to the home position. But if you also click on step, it will actually give you the step of the location of the motion you want to get to specifically one at a time. So, there you go. It's back to home position. Now, let's see how our program runs. So, PRGI, there we go. Now, to begin to play it, however, here's the step. You have to first switch this to off because it will now enable it for the cycle motion to go, as you can see right here. Then you have to switch this to auto instead of teach mode, as same thing as you did here on the pendant. Then you would clear the fault. And as you can see, the fault is no longer there. You would click on reset. And one suggestion is to actually speed it down a little bit, maybe about 30, 30%, because since this doesn't have a specific load on it, and all it just really does is much more about giving it drawings and specific type of uh, shapes, we, we can put it on 35, because it also multiplies at the same time. It's pretty interesting. So now all I have to do is just click on this green button here, and then it'll go. It'll be pretty fast, so. Here you go. There you go. And that was it. Basically two side motion types. Now, you want to switch it back, you want to add things more to the program. All you simply have to do is switch this back to teach mode, switch that back to teach mode, reset your faults, 
and then just continue on from there. That's basically it, guys. Also, one more thing, um, this may not be my last video, like I said, obviously, but more specifically for this robot, because I know many people still have a couple questions about it. So I'll just make some arrangements to come back here and probably show you more features on the robot, of course. That was just an intro to how it works, but anyways, I hope to see you guys pretty soon. So take care.